Okay, I'd like to introduce Matthew Gelf, who's the branch manager of Benigo Bank. Um, I'm a, I bank with Benigo Bank, and I think Ken does, and probably a lot of people in the audience do. So Matthew's a very important person for us. He's always available, and it's a great community bank. So I'm not sure what you're going to talk about, Matthew, but best of luck. Scams. Thanks, Tom. Uh, being the fifth speaker on the same subject, um, I've listened to my speech go over about three or four times. So uh, we'll try and do an abridged version and try not to cover uh, too many areas that have been, been covered, but some of them are certainly key. Um, some of the questions that were thrown around to the group, uh, to, into Neighbourhood Watch before, I'll sort of touch on. So um, we talked a little bit about courting, so that's been raised today. So to give you an idea of what courting is, is that I've got my um, telephone account with Telstra. I'm happy everything's going along well. Phil the scammer contacts Optus, he's got my details, and he arranges to have the phone transferred across from my name, Telstra, across to Optus. The big thing with this is that they need more than just your phone number. So just your phone number is not going to allow porting. Porting is happening less, but it's still happening. Um, they need names, addresses, dates of birth. Everybody has presented so far as to how easy that is to get. It's off your social media, it's off information that you give to people for whatever reasons. So you need to keep your personal information private. The reality is the more information they can gather, the easier it is to, one, to contact the telephone companies, to ring the banks or, or, or anybody. So your personal information is extremely important and you need to keep it secure. <coughs> the telephone companies have got a lot better. So if you're concerned about this, contact your telephone company. So in most cases, you can set up a password with that telephone company. So if someone attempts to do a porting, in this case, Telstra will um, contact me. They'll send me a message. I'm going to ask for a message possibly where the message comes to me, are you requesting your phone to be ported? So talk to your communications company. If it comes an issue with the bank down the track, what it's about is trying to stop these people at the start and being aware of what they do. So contact your telephone company, see if you can set a PIN number before any changes can be made, see if you can arrange for a, um, a password or a message to you if that's going, if you, if it's going to be the case. What doesn't obviously help is data breaches, and Latitude was touched on, Medibank Optus, again, that information is provided, um, and it, it certainly makes it, makes it harder to do. So that's step one from the telephone. From the bank side of things, and it's touched on, is biometrics. So I can't talk about all the banks, I don't know what exact process is, but it, it, go and talk to your bank, sit down and talk to them and get an understanding. So my app now, with my internet banking, I need facial recognition to be able to get into my app. So if my phone is ported, they haven't got my face to be able to get into my, my internet banking. So it can be a thumbprint, it can be a face. Um, Bendigo, also just moving people across to at the moment. So I register one, one device with, with Bendigo Bank. So it could be my iPhone, it could be my iPad. Mine's my phone. If I use a computer at work, I use my iPad at home, as soon as I log into the Bendigo Bank app, I get a message on my mobile phone saying that I'm, I'm logging in, is that me logging into my internet banking from a device that isn't my one registered device? So if somebody overseas has got my information they're trying to log in, whatever the case may be, I get a message on my mobile phone and I have to click on my phone and say, yes, it's me, and straight away the screen comes up about uh, enabling me to do my next transaction. So this is about preparation. Um, once they get too far, yes, the funds are gone. So it's preparation, it's the phone company, it's the bank, and understanding what you can put in place. Passwords are being touched on, but I'll be honest, the amount of people that are coming to us for help to set things up on their phone, their internet banking, whatever, and their password is four zeros. It just it absolutely amazes us. Um, so some people don't have their phones locked at all. So if you drop your phone, you're in trouble. There's 
programs where they will run through the top 50 or 100 passwords um, on, so that they will, they will try to use those. So make sure the password's not someone someone can guess. Um, and as I said, people have their date of birth as their login codes. If they've got that far and they've ported your phone or they've got your internet banking and they've got your date of birth, the first one, one of the first half a dozen things you're going to try is your, is your date of birth. So put some more time and thought into your, into your um, passwords. Um, don't have the same password on your phone as your internet banking. We all have enormous trouble, and I wouldn't know how many passwords I have. Um, it is just ridiculous. It would all be in exactly the same situation. <laughs> but your password on your phone should not be your password on anything on your phone. You're, you're, you're opening yourself up to, again, that's one of the, half, the first half dozen things they're going to try on the internet banking if you get into the phone. Um, Biometrics I've touched on. Um, come back to that. Um, losing your phone, you know, what happens with the banks, apps, and wallets. Again, the strong password, the biometrics is going to make it harder for them to do it. Um, report to the bank who can stop all your cards. And ring telco, they can deactivate the phone. So normally your phone will actually turn off. So if someone ports, does a port on, port on your phone, your phone will actually turn off because it's being moved across to the other person. So if you're at home and you're in a normal situation and your phone just is showing it's no longer connected, jump on to your telecommunications company. Um, what is the bank, how does the bank attempt to protect me? So this is a hard question to answer to be fair. So, security initiatives in place to try and protect your accounts. So the banks run enormous fraud detection tools to reduce, reduce fraud. There's back-end rules that they put into the systems that constantly review and adjust to what's happening out in the market at that point in time. So um, it picks up it's automatic alerts, there's a normal activity. So for this I'll use an example. So I've got a, a handicapped brother and he had to have a, a medical test done that um, I think they only do about 500 a year in the public system. So the company that, um, the medical company that, that, that does these tests is actually over in um, one of the Sweden, Nor Sweden, Norway or something or other. So I asked for an invoice and they sent it over and I said, oh, hang on a second, this is an overseas company. It came to a doctor so we knew it was all about board. I jumped on and I made the payment I'm the bank manager, jumped on, made the payment. Immediately the payment stopped. I got a message back saying that the payment has failed. All my banking was locked. Contact Bendigo Bank. So I rang the office, explained what I'd done, who I was, where the information came from. And because it was all about board, the stop was taken off. I could put the process through. So um, the bank system has picked up. Here's Matthew Gallup. He works in Sandringham. He lives locally. All of a sudden, he's doing a transaction to an overseas entity. Um, the stop has been placed on. A certain amount of money on that. Um, well, this was five hundred dollars, so it wasn't a it wasn't a large amount. Um, so I'm not sure. I mean, just, but we, we have probably it's hard to say we're one branch. We probably have one person every two or three weeks who come in and say the bank stopped my accounts or been contacted by the bank about a transaction, they want to confirm that it was me that, that did it. So the banks do have these fraud detection. Are they foolproof? Absolutely not. You know, I'm not going to stand here and say that it's not going to work. We wouldn't be having this conversation if the ability to stop all these things was, was possible. But it's trying to be, trying to get in front of it and trying to be aware. What can the bank do to recover, recover Funds lost. Um, I anticipate it's a bit like the police that a certain amount of resources are available. The banks will contact the other banks. You need to understand that from the bank's point of view, if there's if the money's going out of a, a, C, a, a Bendigo account to a CBA account for argument's sake, we need CBA to act on our advice that we think this money has been transferred to a fraudulent account, exactly as we would expect them to do the same. So. 
there is a communication between the banks. Fraud alerts are created. How quickly they're, they're acted upon can obviously vary between banks, resources, number of transactions. Um, as touched on, if it's going into a bank account or it's being done by a telegraphic transfer via an overseas bank, there is some way of trying to get in, getting hold of the funds or chasing the funds. Cryptocurrency, it's gone as has already been told. And there's emails that go out to tell people to go and get withdraw some money for some fantastic idea. Go and get some money, get cash out of the bank and go down to, I'll pick Western Union, there's nothing against Western Union at all, but go into the post office and send the money to Western Union. And the emails that I've seen says, don't tell your bank about this. <laughs> so if you're getting an email that's telling you to do something and don't discuss it with your bank, there's a fair chance that there's something there's something really wrong. So um, yeah, talk to talk to talk to the bank. One is that uh, you get a phone call from your bank, and the message will be that your account has been compromised. So what the bank has done for you is set up a separate bank account for you to move your money across to safely. They'll say, Matthew, we've opened an account under Matthew Gallup with ANZ Bank. Here's the BSB account number. Move the money across to that account. Do you think it sounds very reasonable you move the money across? The issue is that, and it was touched on um, by Colin, was that at the moment, a very, very large majority of the banks, I believe only one major bank, actually checks the bank account names of these accounts when the funds are transferred. It's not a requirement under the regulatory bodies at the moment, and again, Colin touched on that could change, but you need to be aware that while you're told this account's under your name, there is no check done by the banks. So it's purely sent by the BSB and the account number. So um, you need to double check. Um, just quickly, a couple of quick ones. Um, checking the invoice details touched on. If you're not sure, ring. We have so many people come in and do, they do transfers to other banks. We ask them, what is it for and where did you get the information? If they got it from an email, let's ring them. So we will ring those people and say, confirm your details. Any money going to a solicitor, a real estate agent, these are the big amounts, these are the ones they love. We ring the real estate agent or a solicitor and check. So just don't accept bank account numbers that you're, 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 you're given. Make, make contact unless you paid them in the past and it hasn't been a problem. And um, so for your 30 seconds more, two quick ones. It doesn't matter who you are and don't be embarrassed by it. We would have here in Sandringham at least one person a week, minimum, who comes in who's been scanned. I've got a CPA, so a very knowledgeable person, you would think very switched on, has lost over $200,000 to crypto scams. So it's everybody. Don't be, don't be scared by it. I've got a friend who I worked in CBA, I worked for CBA for 17 years. He was 20 years in Commonwealth Bank. He moved his bank across five years ago. He rang me the other day. He works out of the banking industry. He's moved $20,000 to his cryptocurrency. He's now got another company that can get the money back for him, which is another scam. So therefore, and he asked me, do I pay them $5,000 to get my 20 back? I said, mate, you work in the bank with me for 20 years. You know what this is all about. Granted, it's a whole lot worse than the world. So, um, ask people. I think that's been touched on over and over again. If you're not sure, you're not expected to be banking specialists, you're not expected to be scam specialists. If something doesn't make sense, ask. Get, get on the phone, talk to someone you know, talk to the bank, and um, yeah, just talk to somebody. Um, thank you very much. Oh, very quickly, there's a new little black book. It's been around for years, but this one is July 2023, so it's just been released. There's 20 pages of scams, and that's why we haven't gone across whatever every, every scam is. So there's 20 pages of scams in there. Um, the they haven't turned up as yet. You can get them from Scam Watch, I think it is. Um, next week we'll have about 150, 200 in the branch. So by all means, drop down to Benny Gavin. You don't have to be a customer. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, Matthew.